Hi, this is Bitluni. In today's episode we will make our electric scooter a little bit more intelligent. This will make it somewhat legal to ride it on the streets, even in Germany. In the previous episodes we converted a simple city scooter to an electric one with some components from China. It was the first time I made something out of steel and it came out really well. In the second part I performed some range and speed tests. Thanks to those who pointed out the small mistake on the power consumption. The max power consumption was only 500 watts. The tests there were performed on a private parking space. Check out the complete playlist if you like to see more on that. This time we will exploit what is legally possible in Germany. So buckle up! A few moments later. Ugh, this is so painful. There is no proper regulation for small electrical vehicles in Germany yet. Everything above 6 km per hour is simply not legal. But there are regulations for pedelecs that can probably be exploited. It's a grey area so please don't take it as a legal advice. Pedelecs are assistive electrical bikes. They detect if the driver is pedaling and assist with additional power. There is no actual throttle on the handlebar. The law specifies that electrical assist up to 25 km per hour with a motor of max 250 watts is considered to be a bicycle. The motor I'm using is 250 watts rated. How convenient! Meep, meep. What we need to do now is to implement some kind of assistance that detects a kick and applies power for some limited time. That's something we can use a microcontroller for. I'm using an Arduino Micro this time. The kick will be detected using an accelerometer and a small buzzer is used for audio feedback. The cheap S speed controller has only an analog input as throttle between 1 and 4 volts, but it also conveniently supplies 5 volt and ground that we can use to power our circuit. The microcontroller will control the throttle by generating a PWM signal. That signal is averaged to a smooth voltage using a low pass filter. You can find all the parts, schematics and code on the project page that is linked below. I attached the prototype to the scooter and recorded the feedback of the accelerometer to characterize an actual kick. Some tabs prior to a kick help to find it in the recordings. I also recorded tilts and other vibrations. Here are the results. Here are the tabs, here are the acceleration. And here the deceleration. And this is a simple vibration that should be ignored. Just measuring the peaks won't cut it since there are always some kind of vibrations. Very distinct to the acceleration is the large area underneath the curve. Using an integral with a gate can be used to detect this. The short appearing vibrations will cancel each other out. The order of the peaks determines if we are going forward or backward. But this is a very simplified explanation just to show the working principle. There are several other precautions to prevent the scooter to go for a ride by itself. Whenever a kick is detected, the throttle is increased for a limited period of time. After that it is ramped down. If the brake is engaged, the throttle is disabled instantly. All that results in a bunch of code that I will spare you here. Once I was sure everything would work, I transferred the circuit to a perf board. Now that the microcontroller has the control, the crude throttle can be removed. I replace it with a simple brake lever that can be used to turn off the throttle or arm and disarm the scooter.
This simple contact switch will be sufficient. Using it conducting by default between NC and COM and cutting off when engaged is a good failsafe. When a wire disconnects by accident it will break and disable the scooter automatically. This looks much better now. To make everything nice and dandy I also decided to get rid of any duct tape solution and hide the batteries in this gap of the frame here. Since they are vulnerable I make a compartment from some aluminium sheet metal. That should work. If I haven't lost the footage, I would show you how I used my patented drill and tap bits to get these retention screws in the tight spot here. The compartment slides in and is retained in the back. A bolt in the front will lock it in place and prevent it from sliding out. One bolt should be enough. What is the worst that could happen? An additional hole will handle the power cable to the speed controller. To protect the microcontroller I designed a protective case in Blender and printed it. It will fit nicely in this opening here. To protect the microcontroller I wrapped it in duct tape. Let's test it! Three taps on the brake will arm the scooter. Each kick adds to the throttle. After a while the scooter decelerates automatically. This assistive system is a huge difference compared to a simple throttle. At least I start to sweat after a while. As soon there will be proper regulations I will instantly switch back to the lazy ass mode. Holding the brake will disarm the scooter again. And here are two of the safety features. Whenever the scooter is tilted it will be automatically disabled. And here the failsafe of the brake. Pulling off a wire is similar to holding the brake. It will stop and even disarm after a second. It's a really cool toy, I hope you have enjoyed this project. Subscribe to not miss the next ones. See you next time. Bye! You didn't think I would really leave it like that. It just needed a few iterations. The single bolt secures everything. <laughs>